I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, 12 players are duking it out. The map is a 15 kilometer random map, and we'll have a look at it in a moment. But first of all, we'd better meet the teams, with the North team in the North, and the South team in the South. Going first for the Northern team, here in the air position at the back, this is Isma98. He is 1200 rated in Eon, and he is in electric pink. In the other rearguard position for the Northern team, this is Elton John. Lowest rated on his team at 800, he is also Eon. He is in mauve. Moving down to this forward position on the southern flank, we have Mythologist, who is 1300 rated and Seraphim in orange. In this central position, we have Blazer or Flasher, 1200 rated and UEF in yellow. A little further back here, this is Prugler PDM, who is 1300 rated and Cybran in white, and he's opened first air. We can't see why that is yet, because he's still only queuing NGs, but we'll see what he does with it in a minute. And last but not least, the highest rated player for the Northern team is none other than Drink of Insanity, well-known caster. He hasn't cast for a little while, apart from he came back with a phantom cast about a month ago, so I'm hoping that we may see more of him soon. Either way, he's 1700 rated, he's Eon, and he's in light green. Moving to the southern team. Here in the rearguard air position, we have Immortal D, 1000 rated, and Seraphim in purple, and he has open first air. That's less surprising because he's an air player, and you can see that he's already got his transport queued up. We'll see where he's going to drop with that. And next to him, in the other rearguard air position, the lowest rated player for the southern team is Slicetron at 700 rating. He's UEF in dark green, and he also has gone first air, so a lot of first air, but we can't see what he's planning with it yet. In the southern flank position, this is Jip, who I believe is the highest rated player for the southern team. I think he's higher rated in March, but we'll check in a moment. Anyway, he's 1700 rated. He is Cybran and he is in baby pink. Moving across to the central position and already all the way forward here, this chappy is Earth in grass green, 1000 rated and Seraphim. And he's going for first and second land. Again, a little further back, this is Vil Coyote. He is 1400 rated and Eon in Cyan. And last, by no means least, also 1700 rated, here we have Karl Marx, who is UEF and in red. And we had a bomber there sneaking across from Prugler. It was seen by Marx and picked up, but it did get one engineer kill before it died. Meanwhile, we have this sneaky lab from Blazer that's run past the com and killed that one NG. So that was quite nice. We've got another lab coming up here from Elton, but that looks like it's just going to run straight into Jip's com and so is it less likely to get anything done. Now, there's that transport from Immortal, but it hasn't gone anywhere yet. Vil Coyote has already gone through the transport, which is fully loaded up, and it's going out for this plateau here. But Blazer, rather than Prugler, Blazer here, has just walked across to this plateau and colonised it, and he's getting set up rather faster than Vil Coyote, though Vil Coyote has many more engines there, thanks to the transport. Another lab raid comes out here towards Earth from Ayrton, but I don't think that's going to get anything done with this com right here. And this sneaky tank is just waiting to pick up an NG from Jip, which Blazer has left here, but if Jip were to see it, he could easily bring these tanks to counter it. Meanwhile, there's that transport from Immortal we mentioned. It's going all the way up to the top here to claim these corner mexes. And it looks like there's no similar play from either of the players you might expect to do. It's either Brink going from there by land or Isma going by air. 
Brink has just edge built this little plateau here, and you can only get up to that by edge build or drop. Whereas Marx has chosen not to. Gun upgrades from both Brink and Marx, including the advanced Eon Range upgrade for Brink. Bomber defending here from Slice, who's definitely considering himself as a second air player, while Pruger is obviously being considered. Pruger? That's not his mirror. Elton. Elton John is considering himself more of a land player, and he has got an air factory, but he's got four land factories and he's pushing spam forward, so we'll see how the air versus land dichotomy resolves itself there. And Marx has just sent a transport up to drop this plateau. So both he and Brink will have their respective plateaus. Little foray from Brink coming down into Marx's base here, but Marx has just finished the gun upgrade, and I think that in combination with the spam, he'll have no trouble seeing Brink's units off, especially not with this help from the Coyote, who is going for the gun upgrade but not the, the advanced grip range that Brink also went for. Some units pushing in here from Jip and from Earth, but they're being handled easy enough by Ravenscom and Elton's units. So Brink's retreated his spam a bit wisely with the term Fugler pushing in. Marks has his gun and is coming up, but Brink will shortly have a better gun, as in same firepower, longer range, and it looks like we're getting sort of a zigzaggy sandwich around here, and we'll be able to see who cuts whom off. And Jip has already got himself up to up to T2 land. And what's this I see? Is this some fire beetle? How delicious. So Brink looks like he might be trying to cut cut marks off, but he might be a little out of position because we've got Bill Coyote in here as well. And Vil Coyote and Marks are both able to push it through the while Brink is a little further away. That upgrade coming in for Isma as well, who's hiding under the water while he gets it, so he might be aiming to come and flank Vil Coyote from the other side. Kruger pulls back and Brink comes back to fire on Marks' spam. Meanwhile, we have a fire beetle running in towards. Blazer's base, so we'll see how that gets done as Brink and Marks engage each other. And they begin to fight. But let's have a look at where this fire beetle is going. It's been seen by the radar, it's got a cup that can be seen by radar. It's been damaged, it's only got 48 hit points left, but boom, that's pretty good. That's a decent amount of um, power damage done quick look at the laser and he's not being power locked so no problems there. Brink and Marks are still facing off but meanwhile the real priority has tried to push because he found both Kruger's com and Isma's com with the speed but not the range of waves. And Kruger going for that combat com as well. So that's forced Will Coyote back. Will Coyote might come across to help Marks against Brink before this Isabel's com is, is here, but it's on its own. And we've got Oblivion being put up here by Will Coyote to, so as to give him, a, him and possibly Marks as well a base to fall back to. And Immortal has brought his cover and has put out a factory here. But I think he's just trying to sneak up some reclaims with these engineers. Meanwhile, down on this flank, 
We have a, a not insignificant push from Earth with the gun and to spam and jip spam and another beetle. While Blazer is down here building T2 point defenses, which he's starting with his T2 core and then leaving these human engineers to finish off. So Earth getting quite deep into Blazer's spam here, and with that gun comm, he will be able to take a lot of it out, and that will provide good cover for this push from Jib coming up this side. Meanwhile, Bill Coyote also producing T2 units, he's sending hover units across the lake in order to help out with this push. Because this is reasonably undefended as things stand, there's all of Blazer stuff has been coming up here. Meanwhile, Kruger is getting stealth to pump with his gun upgrade. And Bill Coyote creeping forward with Oblivions, and that's now brought Brink into range. But Brink has a gun com and gun beat teacher. So in comes Brink, and he's simply blapping that down. But over here, Earth pushing in quite hard against Blazer, and Blazer does get a two point defense that we have to spam, and for some reason, Earth has withdrawn his spam while leaving his com there. So if Blazer and his spam were to engage, that could spell trouble for Earth. Over here, though, Brink down to the yellow as a combination of these point defences and comms open fire and there's extra pressure from the air as Immortal brings in some bombers. Isma is here to help Brink and Brink has interceptors which clear up the bombers but um, down into the yellow, quite deep into the yellow, Brink will have to be careful especially with Marks wandering around here and Will Coyote still having his engineers putting up turrets and now shields as well. Meanwhile, Jip comes in for Mythologist's units here in the side. Mythologist comes all the way over here getting the Dell upgrade. He does already have T2 and he's doing the point effect. So Gump T2, nice combo, will make him both tougher and more damagey. Both Brink and Marx are building up significant spam forces. I think that Marx has them more, but Brink has proved where to help out, and Bill Coyote is fortifying rather than building much in the way of spam. And also, we got three comms here against three comms here. Um, immortal, no upgrades, but so that's slightly less than this. But here's Nano coming in for Marx, and that will make him very tough indeed. We have T3 Air up for the Southern Team, who is guarding these problems with ASFs, and we also have it up for the Northern Team as well. And it looks like we might have a little scrap here between Jip and Mythologist, but Brink pushes in. And I see quite a horde of fire beaters coming up to join Jip's comm, so I think that we need to go to split screen. On the left, Mythologist and Jip fight it out. On the right, we have Flint's army over here with Mark coming in to um, push him back and maybe more because Flint is still down to the yellow and with his shields, gun, and nano, Mark can afford to damage him. But in come fire beetles and bombers, and Mythologist is taking hits from the fire beetles. As he's down into the red, he hides behind his ill sheets. Meanwhile, Brink is also suffering troubles as the bombers rain down fire on him, and Brink is into the red. Boom! Brink goes up our first ejection at 14 minutes, and the, um, the northern team has lost their highest rated player. Meanwhile, Mythologist deep into the red with the bomber fire and fire beaters raining down on him. Jib is pulling back into the yellow and his, and his beaters have dealt with many of the Ilshavels. On this side, Isma is now surrounded by Marx's T2 units and Marx's gun nano common Krugler. He's taken a little bit of damage and he has got gun stealth nano but he's not, he's preferring to fall back. 
and that may have left is the tour's doom. Who could just now see the situation of coming more far beaten here from Jeb? But we should be watching Isma because Isma is into the red. He's taking fire from Marks and Isma as well goes down. The second ejection is also a loss for the Northern team. It's their air player dying to Marks as that, that red menace seizes the means of production. However, the fire beaters have now fallen back, so I think we can go back to single screen. So, after the com bombs up here, neither side has much spam as Marks and Pruko do it out, both with gun, both with nano. But Pruko does have this bit of base to fall back to. It's got a couple of PVs in, but not much. He's trying to put another one here. And he does have tech free production now, so he's getting out a brick. We should probably have a quick look at the tech on the field. We have both the back players for the Southern team at P3 Air, whereas over here, Elton John, it hasn't got any air tech and is only at T2 land. So definite air advantage for the Southern team. Beetle Raid, which we're going to look at here in just a minute. We have Tech 3 just done for Jip, and similarly we have Tech 3 just done for... I think I saw it going up for... one of the other players, who was it? Anyway, we'll worry about that in a moment, because right now I'm worried about this. Look at this, Fire Beetle's charging into the early just expansion. It looks so nicely shielded. But, what, how is it going to manage? Boom! Look at that, look at that fiery destruction as all those vectors and shields and everything go up in smoke. That's delicious. Anyway, yes, that's what I'm saying. Vil Coyote here, um, he has only just got the T3. And Elton, was only, oh, Elton has only just got the T3, but the difference here is that Kruger and Mythologist both have Tech 3 units out. We have Bricks here from Kruger, we have Harbies from Mythologist, and that's going to force Colin Marks to fall back He's down into the yellow. So is Kruger quite deep into the yellow, but these Bricks have saved him. These Bricks and these Harbies. Mythologist happened to handle both flanks, which is going to be difficult for him. And as well as having these mixes up here, Immortal has blocked it. Engines up here for the replay. So, sight advantage to the bottom team in terms of map control. And, and we'll see here that Laser has been evicted as from this plateau as in come a heap of hover units across the lake to try and damage Blazer in his home base. And as if that weren't enough, Vilkyoti dropping a Harby, I believe, in on this air transport to join in the fun. Jip going for Rambo by adding Nano to his gun stealth com. Yeah, there's that Harvey dropping in, but and it will be able to clean up some of this. Don't know how far to get in here with these point defense of these units coming out, but we'll see how that goes. The thought it just looks like he's got a nice raid plan, but is this a drop I see? Oh, looks like it's full of T1 RT. Where's it going? But over here we have a, a, a scuffle going down. It's landed up there, so it's just going to get two T2 mixes, which is going to be nice, but I don't think we're going to get much more done. And what have we got here? Defensive positioning from Elton, as Blazer and Mythologist are both putting up pellets here. Jip saying attack full here, he's saying he's going to push up there, and that's a decent force from Earth, because that's going to be double nano on the gun. Still only single gun. Tactical missile launcher being thrown up there for the Coyote. Oh, sneaky, trying to just quickly reclaim what was up in there, but the tactical missile launcher comes under bomber attack from Blazer. And these bricks are going to see the Coyote quite quickly off this plateau. Meanwhile, Harbies have come sneaking past from Mythologist here. 
And they're getting stuff done in the back. They've killed a mix there. The push has been able to take these mixes out of Marx's hands. Will these two Harveys get any more work done? I'm going a couple of NGs, but those can easily be replaced. Let's see if we have a TPHQ here. And I don't think that a great deal more is going to get done by that Harvey. So let's have a look at this combat here. Jip, we did not can get into T3 and he's using Grip, but we're seeing more fire regions come sneaking in and we see we're taking out an Opium there. Do love a bit of fire region play. We probably just haven't had a chance to reclaim this yet, whereas Jip have been very happy sitting in his for some time. Eco's still pretty balanced though. Southern team ahead by about 20 or 30 maps per tick, but overall total eco only about 5,000 in it. So very close ecos. Let's see whether that's going to change anytime soon. Mythologist under threat from Jip, who's got more health on him. But Mythologist can regen faster and take more health than Tito and Nano. And I'm seeing some big bangs there. What's causing that? Still on the upgrade here. This is a very slow upgrade and really needs to be assisted more than that. Mark's asking for a transport. I wonder what he's planning to do with it. And meanwhile, experimentalists, we have a monkey lord under construction here. We have a GC just being started for here for Earth and John. Meanwhile, the fight continues here as mythologist is being pushed back by superior span from Jip. But there's quite a lot of turrets and we've got sniper bots from mythologist now up here. So the mythologist here is bold enough to come back forward and shoot at Jip's con. But what's this? Do I see a nuke launcher constructed for... What's his name? Slice. Slice from. And he is... Hoping to get there before we have any SMD in the northern team. I'm not seeing any SMD yet. So he might get a shot through, we will see. Bombardment work here for these mobums who launches belonging to Earth as the ad the advancing army of Jip slowly pushes Mythologist back, but Mythologist just has so much regen it's not getting a great deal done. Well the Fabi does matter though, maybe they'll make a difference. We haven't seen much of an air engage yet, and it's my feeling that if it were just Prugler versus, um, I say Prugler, of course that was Ismus, but Prugler in heaven, if it were just Prugler versus Immortal, then I think Prugler would have them more, but we have a reasonable air force here from Slice as well. Now, Earth has been moving around trying to clear some stuff up there. There's the monkey being finished with Pilgrim. Good bombardment here. There must be some key. Yeah, there's Keaton Artie here, mobile Artie from Jip, a few trebuchets, raiding fire down on the mythologist. But that's a lot of units, and including a significant proportion of Harveys for Elton John, and despite his double nano. Earth is feeling forced to retreat. Beaters, beaters, beaters. Are we going to see a beater snipe attempt? Raz and a Raz for Immortal, which were definitely boosted eco, and Team Two are now pulling ahead in eco. 
which is quite nice for them. And he's got Tech 3 on his comp, so he's definitely being a stay at home and build stuff sort of comp right now. Still quite the standoff up here. Vil Coyote is still considering pushes across here, but he isn't going in just yet. As the bombardment continues from this in ever increasing mass of trebuchets. But I don't think it's going to get a great deal done against this 5 vet nano T2 comb. Look at that, he's, he's just been hit by 5 trebuchet shells and shrugs it off. Slightly more of a T3 force from Mythologist here than from Karl Marx, and I do wonder whether Mythologist could actually make the kill if he charged in there before Bill Coyote had a chance to bring these units across. Meanwhile though, that monkey for Kugler is coming forward, and we'll have to see whether it gets anything done. And that's quite a decent harbinger push from Mythologist. And there are now a couple of Percy's out for marks, but not a great deal. Either way, Mythologist feels he needs more and falls back a bit to mass up. But, but, what's this? In comes the monkey with a lot of bricks and support and Vil Coyote, I mean, sure, he's got the shield stuff, but he hasn't run, and that's not going to be enough. And he, he runs to the water. The monkey, has, is he shooting him? The monkey focuses him, and then he's down, no question about it. Boom, immediately up goes Vil Coyote in a blaze of fire as that monkey pushes in, and we'll come back to the monkey in a moment, but right now I'm interested in this. All those beetles, backed up by a few bricks and loyalists, charging in towards Blazer's Com. Now, they will have some radar at here, and of course Blazer has Omni, so they will see the beetles, but that's quite a lot. And though there's artillery here defending, there aren't many turrets. This could be a bad sign for poor old laser as he is surrounded by the beetles, the explosions that go up all around him and he's down into the red and there are still more beetles and boom! Blazer of Flasher defeated by fire beetle spam from Jip just a few seconds before that GC would have just come in and eaten them all up in a second. Poor old laser and of course going to help to stuff um food layers. but it's been given over to Elton John. Meanwhile, we have a, another nuke constructed here for, for Immortal, and he started work on another, so full nuclear play from the Southern team. Meanwhile, we said we'd have a look back at this monkey, and it's completely smashed up this expansion of, um, that used to belong to Bill Coyote, and that was inherited by Mark and more bricks coming across the pond as well. Sim at the same time, this GC comes pushing down, and what have we got to defend? Well, we don't really have much. Jip is building a monkey. Brink, however, from beyond the grave, what is that? This is quite a lot of Percy's from Marks, and there are turrets and artillery and harbies and mobile shields to defend against it, though, so... Maybe it'll be sufficient. Earth with his gun and double nano falling about he's a long way from this. And that monkey is quite capable of wreaking havoc in poor old Earth's face. And Immortal agrees might be game, he says. So we'll, we'll try and watch both of these. We have 
broadsword defense for coming in from Slice Strong, but that's a decent horde of ASFs from two of them coming in to support it. Meanwhile, this GC is mashing its way through this expansion of jets. Oh, but this this monkey is not choosing, and, and it's grip support, not choosing to go for Earth, heading straight for Immortal. And somebody's pinging there, they suggesting that T2 PV go up. He is building double nukes, so Brink has seen the two nukes. Jip finishes his monkey, and where's that? Well, okay, that GC is coming around here. I think that's a mistake. I think that GC should have come straight down here and smacked into Jip's face. But instead, it's going around to go for Earth. Jip is the higher rated player and has the more, so I would have brought those in, that GC in with this stuff and support straight down here. But Firebeaters from Jip, they come to the defence of Immortal and they are smashing through the bricks, leaving many of them damaged, but the monkey is relatively unharmed. First of all, it's taking out a couple of mechs on its way in, but what could possibly stop this monkey lord? They have they have nothing, they've, I mean sure, they've got some teeth with point defences, but this monkey, I mean, there's nothing to stop it, Immortus Tom is right here. In it comes, round it comes, where it's gonna go. Not many grips left in support though. A broadsword comes in, but that monkey here has five vets and is still well in the green. And it comes in, it's going to shoot the mortar. And it fires on the nuke. The nuke is down. But the nuke launches in the last second before it is destroyed. And the other nuke is destroyed. The nuke launches. And it's a defensive nuke. It's going right here. Shortest range defensive nuke ever. The comm is pinged. The comm is focused. Boom. Down goes Immortal. But the nuke lands taking out the monkey and the bricks. That was the most defensive of defensive nukes I have ever seen, but it wasn't enough to save Immortal, who has died to the monkey, and the remainder is transferred over to Jip. But this, um, which is then given straight over to Marks, but this attack has been decimated, and with Earth having double nano, he should be able to see this off easily enough. Meanwhile, what we didn't see was that Jip's monkey and beaters did take out this Colossus. But we have a push coming all the way down here to try and deal with this expansion from Jip's. And that's a lot of Harveys, they might take it out. This Harvey has landed as the, its transport is shot down by this turret. And in it comes. Meanwhile, there hasn't been any movement up here. There is some reclaiming going on here, but it doesn't look as if Prugler is ready to set up on this plateau just yet. Quick look at the eco position. We have a 100 eco per tick lead for the northern team, but overall they're behind in eco, and it's just this huge push. Speaking of, that's, this expansion is just going to die now here, because there's nothing to stop this force. Jip has been building monkeys. He's got two monkeys here. He's just finished a third. And he's still got five beaters. We've got a GC over here, and we've got a Mega. <coughs> So, Marks will have to be careful with his palm still far forward. Carl, are you waiting for death? asks the mortal. But Carl has an awful lot of Percy's ready to go. This force has pushed in quite a lot, but there's a monkey in defence, there's Gyps Gun Nanocom in defence, there's Broadswords in defence, and the monkey starts moving. And as this GC and this Mega Plus Bricks try to come in, and the GC is sucking up some Percy's there onto his arms, we have a GC from Marks as well who built that in um, the, 
the Coyote Zero base must have been here. This army is choosing to retreat from the Monkey Rod and push in. It's got its objective done, which is to kill this expansion, so that's reasonable. The Mega has fallen back, waiting for this next GC, but that might have caused this GC to be sacrificed. The Mega is transferred over to Mythology, so we can micro them all together. And Earth starts on the double gun, so we're going to have a full Rambo Seraphim double gun, double nanocom here. Now, I love that. I love going in with my full Rambo comms. But in a game this big, with the, this stage of the game with this many experimenters about, he's going to have to be very, very careful about how he used it. Maybe he, he would be tempted to make a drop, but he hasn't got air control, so we'd have to be super careful to get that. Could defend against this very well, though. That would be a perfect use for it. Meanwhile, those Percy's have mobbed down the other GC, but the Mega is still standing on full health, and suddenly Marx is missing a lot of Percy's, and we've got bricks coming in, we've got a Mega coming in. Marx will have to be careful, he's backed up a bit. So... Northern team, it's lost its highest rated player and both 1700s are still alive for the southern team. But it's got 300 more eco per tick, it's got much better map control down here, like much better. And it seems to have just scored a reasonable victory over marks up here as well as this oh, um, slice hasn't had a chance to reword any of this. So that is pretty brutal, who do you think is going to win? Tell me in the comments below. As always, please don't go to the end and cheat. I won't know, but you will. Fat Boy defence being prepared by Marks, and they are a good defence against Mega if kited well because they do outrange Megas. This army is looking quite formidable, but that's two monkeys, so. Is that enough to take on two monkeys? Because a lot of that is still Medusa spam? Lobo spam. But it's got a decent horde of harpies, so I don't know which way that would go if he just charged in right now. So that fat boy is now in range of the Mega and the Mega can't hit so the Mega runs away. Marks also moves his Percy's forward and he's preparing another fat boy immediately. So it seems like Marks has a good plan for defense on this side. Meanwhile, Prupa finishes a Tsar. Looks like Elton was waiting for this GC, but will that wait to have cost him? Because there are three monkeys in this area from Jip. And three monkeys are easily clear this up, even with this GC here. And that Mega is just taking so damage as the Fatty and Percy Sully advance. We have a nuke from Slice. Where's it heading? It's heading up here, but I don't think that's going to get through because I think I saw an SMD somewhere. Where did I see that SMD? Okay, maybe it's going to get through. Maybe I completely missed that SMD. No, there it is, and it's not loaded. Okay, so. We will have to go and watch this in a second. Oh, oh, there it is. There is an SMD in there, and it was loaded, and it's still loaded. So, not going to be much access there. Meanwhile, Farbeat has come in and blow up these halves down here, leaving that monkey in entirely unscathed, and Elton John chooses to retreat. Meanwhile, Jip has also finished a Mega. So we've got a Mega and two monkeys versus one GT and a bit of spam. And half the spam is separate out here because it's had to come all the way back round. So 
So this feels like it's going to be quite a big win for Jip. Now I don't know whether that... So Elson Jones moved here with his GC. So, and now he's coming back. I, I don't know whether that was a good move or not. Meanwhile, Mega and GC with a bit of T3 support and another Mega are attempting to reclaim some ground here against Marx. But Marx is first fatty is here. He's got a chicken and he's got a GC coming up. And this... Oh, we'll have to keep an eye on this. But also we have this being driven back over here. And Elson's GC is firing on the monkey and it might get the monkey done, but it's, it's turning to run away and that means it isn't dealing damage. It's a mistake. I think that GC is just going to die. Over here it looks like the forces of the just are having second thoughts and moving back a bit under that fat boy fire. But that Tsar has come all the way down here and round and it's now coming up from the bottom to try and help out Elton John who has indeed lost his GC for almost no damage on those monkeys or Mega. Zark comes in and tries to deal damage to the monkey. There's quite a lot of stuff on the ground though. The Zark backs away a bit. Don't know why. Could have hurt, could have probably taken out that monkey and backed away and still survived. Over here, we are seeing lines of point defense going up, but these two fatties now are just throwing artillery fire at them, and so they're going to just die. He is putting up to RT but it's already in range of the fatties so that's going to be no help. He's got more back here which will make it much harder for the fatties to push in any further but even so. Oh and I see a Novax there. Where's the satellite? There it is. So we've got this Novax out from Slice creeping forward to see what work it can get done. And the experimental push from Jip moves in. And I don't feel like there's anything to stop it here. There's AGC but against this force. What's it going to achieve? Another GC comes up, but that still feels like too little to stop the rock. But two Zars now, one from Mythologist and one from Krugler with a decent heap of anti-air from Krugler are charging in and they look at and they've taken out one of the XPs from Marks, but this is a dive from Slice who's gonna lose air for it, but he does kill both of the Zars before they even get a second XP down, these two fat boys are both okay, and that would probably save this um, save this from the Megas. Over here, there are now three GCs in there, and they have actually killed one of the monkeys, but Earth has brought up a chicken, there's still a Mega here, there's still a monkey here. Meanwhile, though, this Novax has taken out the SMD which was almost loaded for Mythologist and immediately, immediately Slice takes advantage of it and nukes Mythologist's original base. That could hurt him quite a lot. I don't think there's anything else that's going to be able to stop that nuke. This GC is coming in but there's just too much fatty fire and it's going to die. These members are too far away to support. But here comes that nuke, and I think that poor old mythologist is about to see nuclear fire descend upon his base. Boom! Oh, there goes the mythologist to reach the base. And that has hurt. It's evened out the echoes again 
for the for the northern and southern teams. And I think I saw Earth just giving over that chicken to Jip so that he can macro it all together. Meanwhile, we have Tea Tree Artie on the way for Mythologist. That might be able to get some work done. What's this Novax trying to achieve at present? I'm not sure. More Zars on the way for Kruger. But these Megas, he's got three now, but they just don't seem to be enough to make any headway against marks. More five, we just swarm around the experimental push of which there are now four experimenters here from Jip and Scythe finishes a second Novax. This expansion was rebuilt by Mythologist, but there's just T3 Mobile RT hammering it. It has got T2 Statifizer to defend, and that might get some work done, but I, my, my money's on JIT for that. And we've got another Fire Beetle Raid coming in. The XPs are pushing up the middle, but these Fire Beetles are going round the outside. Uh, we can see that this RT war continues to be a standoff. We'll check back on it occasionally, but watch this. I think we need to go to split screen to see this and this together. So let's do that. So here on the left, we have these experimenters coming up from JIP, but we also have these fire beaters running around the left. Here on the right, this GC is pushing in, killing mexes. We have Earth's come here surrounded by shields and double gun, double nano, but will that be enough against the GC and that many bricks? Meanwhile, here come the fire beaters, here come the experimentals, they're focusing down the megalith and I think that megalith is going down. But what are the fire beaters going to achieve? There goes the mega. Well, it looks like the answer is nothing. The fire beaters are just being popped by these turrets right here. SCU is coming out to fight. This GC needs to be turning and engaging, but it isn't. Over here, this GC is having far less luck because we've got Earthscom, we've got this big horde of gunships, and they're just going to go on and mash this up. So good defense by Sice's gunships and Earthscom over here. On this side, we have Elton John being picked up after the fire beaters have left no damage there, but there's a lot of anti air here, and boom! Down goes Elton John, fried by these lightning tanks. So despite the fire beaters not getting either s and not getting any of the mexes, Elton John is down. These experimenters are still surviving. There's one mega here, but I don't think that's going to last. Back to single screen. And look at this. The North team is just collapsing here. We still have an almost full health Five vet mega and two monkeys with this immense amount of anti-air to back it up against one mega and nothing else. Azar is under construction, probably will be finished, but there were two novices laying down fire here. The and these four now fat boys are pushing in and they feel like they're about to get work done against Artie Bank and the Artie Bank goes up. Four fat boys versus three megas. My money's on the fat boys. We are seeing artillery fire from that T3 Artie we mentioned earlier hitting the air grid, but it doesn't feel like it's getting a great deal done. I mean, it's got a little bit done, boom, but... That's only a little bit, and it feels like too little too late. This Tsar comes in, but that's an immense amount of anti-air squadron experiments from Jib, and the Tsar is just getting shredded, and... Kruger at first, he has to pull it back, it goes down to the yellow. He is going to get it away, but at what cost? What's Immortal? Immortal says that the nuke this. I think he's wrong because there's an SMD here and it's loaded, that's going to stop it.
and these fat boys well the Artiwara has been rebuilt but the Megas are retreating and now the southern team is 300 ahead in mass it's swarming over this part of the map it's got map control there's the nuke being stopped and the fatties have just advanced and sure a couple of their shields go down but with these we're, we're just to fall back to they're just they're just breaking through here one of the megas goes down these boys are pushing in and the czar can't get close because of all these all, the, all these aa units there are three nova seas messing around feels like it's all over, feels like the fat lady has metaphorically sung and Kruger says GG. Does he mean GG or is it a subtle plan? Is he going to try a last ditch telemaser or something? He is not, Kruger resigns. Is Mytho going to try to fight it out for the last um, glorious stand. There are some corsets missing here, but I don't think that's going to get anything done. And Mythor just agrees with me resigning. So, victory for the southern team. Do you think the north team could have seen off that last huge push of Jacob's Experimentals? How? Where did they crumble? Where, where did they go from having an obvious lead, especially after that lovely monkey raid down here that took out so much eco and killed off Immortal. And did those beetles swing it in South Team's favour? Now, you and I, we all love some fire beetle play, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, game. If you did, or even if you didn't, don't forget to go down below and like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.